Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're back on the second dev server for updates 1.101, and this time it's time to have a look at the B-17BS. This is a new float plane which is coming to the Swedish tree in updates 1.101, and it's very similar to the B-17B and also the B-17A that we have, apart from it has two very large pontoons uh, attached to it. So this thing's going to be rank 1, Battle Racing 1.3 is going to be the first thing in the tree so if you're interested in getting down this tree without researching it this would be the time uh, just try and get you know the b17b researched uh, before you do anything else what does this plane have then well what it has is an engine which is the bristol mercury uh, 14 cylinder radial 900 horsepower max max uh, power that's what we like to see has some fuel tanks as well has also a gunner who has access to an eight millimeter in the booty and it's actually in a bit of an odd place there a bit of a weird placement for the good old gunner but also this machine has two eight millimeter ksp machine guns if you know anything about these swedish vehicles what you will know is their machine guns whether they be eight or 13.2s or 12.7s all of these slap and they slap hard which is you know great for the vehicles they do a ton of damage they do a lot of stuff and then on top of this armor wise it does actually have some it has a seat or you know the seat behind the pilot has 10 millimeters and then there's a little area in front of the or behind the gunner i suppose which is also 10 millimeters so not a ton of stuff to protect these guys but enough the other thing is along with the two eight millimeters you can actually have a ton of different weapon choices you know you have air targets armored targets ground targets stealth tracers universal and default you can pretty much pick whatever you want to when it comes to uh, these rounds which is really nice and also you are stuck with some secondary weapons so i'm not sure how this actually is so um there is actually a modification for uh the m40s but you can't uninstall them and it gives you according to this 250k bombs but you can't actually seem to be able to change them so i don't know whether this thing is uh whether it's bugged or whether it's supposed to be like this but at least for now you are stuck with nine 50 kilo bombs some are on the wings some are on the innards yeah it's not a ton of damage but i suppose it's enough to be able to cause a bit of a ruckus around the place also you do have the general modifications for a machine like this flight performance is always going to help the most because of the heaviness and the weight of the extra you know the pontoons and stuff like that it's going to be rough uh, trying to get this thing around the place as so somebody who's played both b-17s and understands you know uh, the issues that they have uh, when it comes to their general speed I can uh, I can only imagine what this thing is going to be like and then of course you have the wonderful little tail which is a tri-tail uh, it looks really nice on it and very different design compared to a lot of other stuff we have the b17bs only has this one camo but it is different to the standard uh, normal camo we get it has a two and also has some kind of insignia on the front which is lovely to see so overall i'm very happy to see this plane because of the implications it may have and if it is a bug when it comes to the bomb stuff hopefully it's sorted before release uh, so therefore you know we can get the actual bomb loads on it so i'd like to see the performance of this thing if it didn't have uh the if it didn't have the extra weight of the bombs on so this is the gunner seat as you can see not exactly a wonderful position uh, but you do have okay coverage behind you it's pretty much to the each tail and then if you go up you actually do have a decent amount where you can fire upwards you can see the fire rate on the eight millimeters is wonderful and then on this side as well you obviously can't really shoot through the tail which is a problem but that's completely fine the cockpit itself is beautiful as well it does open and close and it also has some form of hinge in the middle a simple cockpit which is pretty much exactly the same as the one you see on the b17 and also you know the the same uh, overall luckiness of it unfortunately sweden do not get their own test flight area which is a bit of a shame it's basically the same as the german one but still you know it's uh, nice to have another float plane in the game one thing that we've seen a lot of 
uh, is the expansion of naval forces, whether it comes to modifications, whether it comes to other stuff. And this aircraft, <laughs> and this aircraft is one of those things that I think will add a little bit more to naval forces. People have been asking for m many more float planes in the game, and now we have one for Sweden. The only issue is, well, Sweden doesn't have a uh, Sweden doesn't have a naval tree yet, uh, so <laughs> therefore this one comes a little bit early. You can see the cluster of the bombs in there. There are five of them, uh, so you've got five in the center and then two uh, in uh, four in pairs. So you can see the four in pairs drop first, then they drop as singles in the center, which is kind of cool. So there we go. And then you've got the two eight millimeters on the wings, so therefore you're going to have to you know, sort that out properly and make sure that you have it going. But yeah, the, the B-17s uh, for Sweden, if you've never played them, they're, they're actually quite interesting vehicles. Because they get such a high spawn, they get the bomber spawn, they turn into pseudo-attacker aircraft because their bomb loads really aren't anything to write home about. So because of that, uh, you end up just throwing your bombs to the nearest target, and then what you do is you go into out-and-out -out fighter mode. Now, one of the issues with this machine, you don't get a bomb reticle, so you just have to hope for the best when it comes to bombing stuff or, you know, be a, a person with very good bombing uh, credentials, I suppose, or, you know, work out how to do it. Um, but you can still use this as a pseudo attacker. Uh, well then. I'm guessing we're not supposed to go this speed, but uh, I suppose now we're more maneuverable. <laughs> oh dear, um, this is a bit of a problem. Well, we know the uh, the exceed speed is around about 360 kilometers an hour, which is completely fine. You know, we can stay below that, uh, or you know, you can rip them off and become a, as I said, uh, that pseudo attacker vibe, pseudo. Uh, what would you call it? The let's see. Ooh, there we go. The you can be like that attacker, or you can be that supportive fighter. Kind of like how stuff like the uh, B6 are. You know, stuff which doesn't have a ton of armament, but enough to be able to create a bit of a ruckus. And I think that's how I'm going to play this thing. You know, in aerialistic at the BR that this is at, what dominates is the large bombers, the Farman, the F-2222, the NC, um, the German bombers, the JU-88, stuff which has really nice bomb loads, which can really sway a match at those lower tiers. This thing doesn't have that. It doesn't have the big bomb loads. It doesn't really have, you know, the maneuverability. It kind of doesn't really have anything <laughs> when it comes to, you know, uh, ending the game or being a match winner. But what it does have is a little bit of everything. It can, if it needs to, clean up a column of vehicles. It can, if it needs to, uh, you know, go after the enemy in a very aggressive way. It can do all of these things, but just not as well as certain other things. And that doesn't mean that this vehicle is going to be useless. I had many matches and stuff like the B-17 uh, B and the B-17A, which were uh, very fun, where it would be me and somebody else left on my team, and it was basically my job to try and get them to kill the enemy while using myself as bait. Now let's get the pontoons back. I want to just check the. Uh, I want to just check if they fall off again, because that was just really random. <laughs> like I've never, uh, I never would have imagined that. That might be. That either might be a little bug or something else, I don't know. But let's, uh, let's get up in the air again. And also, with the 8mm guns, because not a lot of stuff has any armor at this tier, what that generally means is you'll be able to shred uh, biplanes. Uh, an 8mm turret, even a 762 turret or a 127 turret at this BR, can be devastating to a lot of planes uh, that you actually, you know, fight. Because nothing, as I said, has armor on the engine, so you just shoot center mass for the engine. Like if a guy's here, you just shoot the engine a lot, or you shoot the engine a lot on this side, and their engine will start hurting, and they won't be able to catch you. 
especially if you become a speedy boy by getting rid of your pontoons. So there's just a lot of ways to be able to influence a match, even if you aren't going to be the main carry of that match. At lower tiers, it's much easier to be a little bit more useful in different ways. And for me, that is what this machine is. It's the little machine that tries to be useful. It does also have combat flaps, and you can see its, uh, it's turn rate and its loop rate. Not exactly world class, is it? Uh, but it's good enough. <laughs> it will be, it will be fine with the engine working very, very hard, and then also, you know, all of the uh, little instruments and stuff it has. The changes they've made to the sound as well in this update so far, I think, have been generally positive. I think some of the tanks are a little bit loud, but everything else is, you know, fine. I think it works pretty well. So let's just see. Once again, going in for a bombing run on some cargo stuff. Let's try and push it, so we're over 300 now. 320. 330. Hmm. Guessing we may have to go faster than that. Well, let's give it a go. Because normally it gives you a little bit of warning on the good old floats if they're going to fall off or not. Uh, but maybe this time it felt like it wasn't required. Uh, let's get rid of all the bombs as well, so we're a little bit lighter. Obviously hits the critical speed quite easily. Um, I mean, this is this is something that's going to happen in a plane which really, you know, has a lot of weight attached to it. As I said, the B-17s weren't exactly fast by themselves, and with all of this additional weight, it's never really going to be something which breaks any land speed records. And I hope once Swedish Navy comes out, maybe this is a sign that it will be next, you know. Maybe instead of the French Navy, we get the Swedes. Then we might have a reason to have this in the lineup and just go and capture a point miles away from everything else. Which generally seems to be what float planes do in realistic, uh, or uh, naval arcade, sorry, because they don't really have the ability to do really anything else. So once we get the bombs back, let's give it a go once again. We'll go into a uh, inclination. We'll gain speed. Let's see what happens to the good old pontoons. So we're at 310, they're fine. 320, they're still fine. 330, still good. 340, struggling a little. 350. Ah, 350. <laughs> okay. They don't seem to have a physical model when they break off. So as long as you go 350 in this thing, you will be able to uh, break them off and become a much more maneuverable fighter. So, you know, that that is definitely something to look forward to. It does mean that landing might be a bit of an issue. Uh, but apart from that, you know, you can have a bit of fun with this wonderful vehicle. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Ambrosius McClellan, B. Young, Battling Bacon, Blackie, Chris Giltnane, Conte Baraka, Daniel Stanton, Elov Goat, J. Wilt, Martinez, Trigger Hippie, Universe, Eugens Terry, and also A. I'm Devilish and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.